Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth session of Star Trek Bestet. We are an actual play podcast of Star Trek Adventures, and we're running with the interesting premise of a basically a Prometheus class flung through time trying to get back to uh, its own timeline. Now, don't, of course, stress if you can't stick around for the full session or if you missed the previous episodes. Uh, the VODs and audio-only versions are available on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. But I also try to make things like uh, this episode in particular, I try to make them consumable even if you haven't been caught up. Um, the only announcement I have this week is that next week, the 9th, uh, we will be off. Uh, the reason for that is because I will be part of a GM roundtable for Cyberpunk Red that day. Um, so more details on that as we get closer. Um, supposedly they're going to get back to me Monday about, you know, what it's going to, where it's going to be streaming and all that. So, uh, more details then. But, uh, with that said, let's just go around and have, uh, everyone introduce themselves and, uh, let's start from the bottom up. So starting with Matt. Hello everyone. I'm Matthew. I play a Lieutenant Thavarin, um, basically the ship's tactical officer slash chief engineer. Mr. Wolf. Oh, hello. I am uh, Dare Wolf. I am playing Lieutenant Cater, the Chief Medical Officer and Science Guy, and uh, just happy to be here. Mr. Brian, you are muted, as is tradition. As is tradition. Uh, hello, I am Brian, at Mind Over Brian on Twitch and on Twitter, but on Twitch it's spelled with a zero, and I am playing Lieutenant Baylor Droxine, our helmsman, and uh, our Danan... Uh, uh, Enthusiast, not really. <laughs> the leader of the opposition, as it were. Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nikhil. I play a Camelot shapeshifter named Lieutenant Alexio, who uh, who has no job, but just, just helps out and does schemes and plans. Everyone, I'm Alex. I play Lieutenant Abasi, the Cation acting captain. And I'm looking forward to playing with the rest of these guys all year. And of course, if you don't know me, I'm ELH, the Game Master Extraordinaire. With that, let's run our quick little introductory video. All right, and welcome back. So something I like doing for all of my uh, tabletop streams in particular um, is having the players do an opening monologue. And I believe, Lieutenant Alexio, you have that honor tonight. All right. Lieutenant Alexio's log, stardate 51828.3, five days after the temporal incident. I remain in a rather foul mood. Initially, I think thought that this strange situation that the Vestat has found itself in would be to my benefit. It amused me to think of what hijinks I would be able to get up to as we muddled up the timeline. But the other day, one of my improvised schemes went awry, and I worry that this situation may be more than I bargained for. This seat is my speci speciality, but I'm finding it difficult to keep up when the situation keeps changing. Back in our original timeline, my freedom was limited, but I had a special way with running circles around my superiors. Now I'm free, but I don't know what to do with myself or whether my actions are just going to make life more difficult for the people around me. The crew is a fine bunch, but being in such close proximity with only the same eight people is driving me insane. I pity the acting Captain Abasi. He's done a good job at decision making, but dealing with this crew is not easy. Lieutenant Thavarin is a good enough chap when off duty, but his desire to be the best at everything is tiresome. Lieutenant Droxine seems deeply obsessed with getting his chance to serve on the Enterprise to the point that he keeps referring to that ship as a female, which I think I'll leave it to Lieutenant Rilerta unpack that. 
it doesn't help that both these men seem to think that they should be the ones barking orders. And don't even get me started on that doctor. One minute he's all, all hail Captain Kitty. And then the next minute he's ignoring the captain altogether and just doing his own thing. I think I might sneak some sedatives into his food today. Aside from the chaos among the crew, this timeline we find ourselves in is in a bothersome state. The main difference between this version of 2374 and our own is that the Dominion War is at a stalemate. The Romulans and the Tholians have thrown in with us, but the Breen seem to have joined with the Dominion earlier and they have had claim over Bejor ever since they came through the wormhole. Both sides are looking to gain an advantage, but at this rate, it seems like the war is going to drag on forever. We've received distress calls from ships and planets and stations, but we've had to remain cloaked and we've ignored all of them. Captain Abbasi has some major decisions on his hands and I fear that his crew is about to offer him some more disagreement at that point. Now that's actually something I can drink to, not being the poor soul who has to make the decisions around here. End of log. Very nice. You may have one momentum for that thorough log. <laughs> so uh, we are going to start today's episode uh, with a little bit of bridge banter. So all of you, uh, it's alpha shift or whatever it actually means for shift. I mean, there's only what, eight, nine of you. So uh, my point is, is that pretty much everybody's on the bridge except for your uh, lovely Russian, who's probably in engineering right now. But uh, as you all are sort of sitting at your stations, doing what work there is, uh, suddenly R'hllor lets out like this really loud yawn. And she stretches nice, you know, like a cat almost and just sort of goes, uh, oh, my God, if we have to deny another's distress call, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, my God, this is boring. I mean, you think you're having a bad time. I have to fly us cloaked no one can see my epic maneuvers i put us through three barrel rolls for nothing <laughs> we saw them no you didn't you didn't even feel them Tavarn's doing such a great job on the stupid inertial dampeners i can't make you guys feel anything i could rewrite power from them if you want at about 75 percent functionality you should be able to feel those barrel rolls although I do object to the fact that you're all taking this so lightly. People are dying out there. Every one of those distress calls is another ship that's being lost, another colony that's overrun. And at that, Relora actually looks a little bit admonished and she kind of, you know, sits more straight, not completely straight, but she kind of sits a little bit more and more or less says, um, no, you're right, Tavarn. Um, sorry. Um, Let's just say I had my fair share of distress calls during the Dominion War. Raylor, don't feel bad. Tavarin is overblowing this because no matter what we did now, whenever we went back in time and fixed the time change we made, this timeline would cease to exist regardless. So these people don't matter. I know your feelings would tell you that they matter, and Tavarin clearly feels like it's our duty to help them, but the captain has very rightly kept us from interfering any further because... Any effort, any risk we took would be meaningless once we get back and fix our mistake. I was actually going to start a betting pool for uh, what the next distress signal would be, but now I'm thinking that might be a little insensitive. Just a little bit. And I think Verissa kind of turns slightly in her chair, like not completely around, but she just sort of turns enough that uh, she's talking to you all. She says... Well, um, speaking of distress calls, it seems I have one that we might actually want to pay attention to. Uh, play it for us. All right. She presses a button, and what comes over the uh, bridge loudspeakers uh, is a feminine voice, um, and it sounds... I'm trying to think of how to describe this. Like, you know how old-timey telephones had, like, a very distinct sort of vocoding to them? 
So imagine that, but with a Starfleet message kind of a thing. So you're you're basically hearing something that is otherwise distorted, still intelligible, but slightly distorted. And the message is as follows. To anyone out there, this is uh, Ensign V of Starfleet Vessel Intrepid. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I woke from stasis to find that my injuries had been healed and that the rest of the crew is completely gone. All 65 of them, gone. I don't know where they went. And uh, if that wasn't bad enough, it, it seems the Intrepid might have crash-landed on some planet. I, I honestly, all I see when I look out the windows are uh, bits of scenery and storms outside. I, I couldn't tell you if I'm on a Class D or a Class M. It's that bad. Um, unfortunately, I wish I could tell you more, but... As it is, I'm using the last of the power reserves to send this repeating signal. Please, if anyone is out there, whoever is listening, I, I need your help. And then the message repeats. Uh, Droxine would like to make a scan to see if there are any other ships that might be within range of this distress call. Sure. Why don't you roll me a uh, reason and con assisted by the ship sensors con. Uh, difficulty of, uh, let's make it a zero. Astro navigation as a focus? Nah, eh, can't give you astro navigation for that one. All right. All right. And if someone can get the sensors con from the ship, we'll see how much momentum. Very nice. So that's going to start you with three momentum. So actually, uh, when you look at who's in the area, Droxine, the only, well, ships that are in the area are a pair of uh, Jem'Hadar attack fighters or the attack craft. But even then, they're about six hours out at maximum warp. Captain, I can confirm that there are no other Starfleet vessels within range. Uh, I recommend that we could uh, give aid if necessary. What do we know about the Intrepid? And I'm going to now give you all access to a handout that contains not just the, the distress call uh, text but also what you would know about the Intrepid, just looking it up on your computers. Captain, based on... Captain? Based mm -hmm. on these readings, um, it seems like there's a possibility that this ship may have just arrived here. Can you elaborate on what you mean? Uh, well, the distress signal is barely a, even half a day old, but I, I mean, it looks like it's been maintaining this power for, I mean, uh, this ship's been missing for 200 plus years. Uh, this might help explain it, Captain. The designation on the USS Intrepid is an NX-07. NX class? Mm. So uh, either it's a 200-year-old ship or we've put a bigger crack in the time stream than we thought. I've taken a look through the crew's manifest for the Intrepid. Uh, not much is known about this Enzin V, uh, a Vulcan officer, not much of a service record. Not unlike us, I'd say. Hmm. And oh, Captain, yeah. from what I've been able to tell from its service record, it disappeared during the Earth-Romulan War. I don't know if there might be some significance to that, but we do know that many events during Captain Archer's time frame were influenced by, uh, how should I put this, temporal shenanigans, interference from the future. Perhaps that might shed some light on the situation or be responsible for it. Perhaps Lieutenant Droxine set course. Let's see if we can get a hold of Ensign V. Hi, right, sir. And right, it's set a, course. Yep, you set course. And of course the stars shift just a little bit to the <laughs> left to signify that you've obviously changed course. Um but this entire time uh, I guess we should back up a little bit. So ever since that one meeting you had where um, Cater and Relore tried to go into Mir's psyche, the symbiote, and 
see what was going on with the symbiote, see, you know, what sort of memories were changing with the symbiote. Mir's been very quiet. Like, she still shows up to duty. She'll reply if you talk to her. But unless you're deliberately involving her, she's been dead quiet for, like, the last day and a half. So it's probably with a little bit of surprise that when she speaks up, you notice. And specifically, she says, Um, Captain, I don't know if it's relevant or not, but I believe a long-lost family member was on the Intrepid. Um, third host, sorry, I should clarify. Third host, um, he had a cousin that was... Vulcan, uh, sorry, it's it's very confusing, but I, I just know that I have some form of a, a relative on that ship. Do you foresee that being an issue? I, I mean, I hate to put it this way, but if V, this Ensign V, is quite literally the only one there, I mean, we can't mess up the timeline by saving an ancestor... Uh, if that makes any sense. It does. So let's get over there and see if there's anything we can do, if we can restore part of the timeline and get something fixed. I think we should. And on the note, we are going to skip a couple of hours ahead um, because even under Cloak, you have sort of a maximum top speed. Um, I'm sort of imagining it that the way you're able to actually get above like warp eight in a cloaking device, especially a TOS one, is Tamarochka's literally hooked the alpha section warp core directly to the cloaking device. So it's one of those things where she is basically hot rotted the Bastet. Um, and it seems to be working so far. But uh, what's happening, uh, what happens when you arrive is the following. I actually have a specialized map for this. All right. So when you arrive and you drop out a warp on the edge of the system, what you see is a swirling orb-like disturbance in space. Now, just looking at it, you can tell this is a wormhole of some sort. But you also can tell with just a cursory glance at the sensors that this is an unstable wormhole. Um, you do see that all sorts of matter is being both expelled and consumed uh, by the wormhole. Uh, bits of rock, bits of interstellar gases, things like that. And you also see that there is a planet in system that is, um, well, to put it lightly... The wormhole could eat it at any moment, kind of a thing. I make a scan with sure. the ship's sensors to try and locate a weak power signal or a power signal like of, of a Federation vessel on the planet. You certainly may. Why don't you roll me a reason and a science, and the ship will assist you with a sensor's science. Okay. Reason. All right, one from the ship. Very nice. Oh, would right. Difficulty. Mind, difficulty of two. Would everyone mind if I used a momentum for three days? Go ahead. Okay. Do it. <clears throat> All right. That is a total of four successes. So you get two momentum back. You are able to pinpoint that the distress call is coming from a moon of the Class J uh, gas giant that is in system. Um, but you're also detecting something unusual about the wormhole. And I am going to give you specifically a handout. You should now have a handout that reads wormhole scan results. You may flavor appropriately. Sir, I'm... Or Captain, I'm I'm scanning the wormhole right now, but ooh, it's it's incredibly unstable. I mean, to the point where it's causing massive fluctuations in gravity in the surrounding area. Oh, geez, based on these readings, this planet's not going to last more than 24 hours, sir. Um, also, there's hmm, there's also some kind of object in the middle of the wormhole as well. Uh, wait a minute, it it's disappearing, but but now it's reappearing. I. Wait, no, it's there, but it's not. I, 
I can't get a lock on it, sir. Um, but I mean, the ship should be able to easily handle the gravitational flux as long as it doesn't get any, you know, worse or doesn't increase in its intensity. So I think we can fly in there, but I'm trying to lock onto this object, it's gone again, damn it. If we get closer, do you think you'd be able to get a better sensor rating? I can't be sure, sir. It's 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 like a Schrodinger's cat. Like it's there, but it's not there, but it is there. Is it alive? Is it dead? I don't even know. And then I just trail off. What about the intrepid? I did find it on the moon to the planet, sir, but let's see here. All right, here's what I can tell you. I mean, based on these readings, sir, I'm thinking that we could get close enough to perhaps scan a more detailed scan of where the uh, Intrepid is and also maybe figure out what this object is, but we'd want to be ready to warp away at a moment's notice. We should be able to do that. Probably. I can get you in and back, no problem. Uh, if I may, Captain, we could send a probe it, we might be able to uh, endure it against some of the gravitational shear and avoid putting the ship in danger. Lieutenant Cater is going to pipe in. A probe wouldn't last a second in there. I'm going to send the readings to your console so you can yeah, take a look I'll at them. Give you access to that as well, Matthew. You're you... right. The gravimetric shear would tear it apart. Mm -hmm. Great idea, though. Well, next time, share the data beforehand, and maybe I won't make asinine suggestions. Because that just makes me look like an idiot. So thanks for that. Doubtful. <coughs> we're all we're all learning here to be a crew and to be. I'm sorry. All right, Lieutenant Druxine, bring us in closer. Get ready to get us out in a moment's notice. Hi, Captain. I got you. All right. So Druxine, I now need you to do a very important role that's going to flavor how the rest of the adventure unfolds. Oh, good. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> So the reason I'm making this a task is because, again, we have an unstable wormhole that is tearing the system apart, tearing itself apart. And if you don't handle it carefully, bad things can happen. So what you need to roll me here is a control and a con. The ship will assist you within engines and con. The difficulty on this will be a four. And the complication range will be a 17 to 20. Goodness. We have Sorry, I'm momentum. rolling a, uh, a control con, do you say? Control con, correct. Okay. See, can I assist with this with a direct? If you tell me how. I told him to bring us closer and get ready to leave if anything shows wrong. Sure, I'll allow it. Uh, you're going to assist with your own presence command. And I do have advisor. Mm -hmm. I spend three uh, momentum, so I can have two extra dice. Okay. Helm operations as a focus. Would apply. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, the good news is you could reroll that complication because the captain is assisting you. Ooh, I absolutely reroll that complication. Would my warp field dynamics perhaps be a good focus? I'll give it to you. Yeah. Much better. Okay, so we're currently at five, seven successes. Uh, go ahead and get the ships in there as well, and let's see if we get any more. And it was what? Uh, engines con from the ship. There we go. All right, hey. that's a total of eight successes. means you get four momentum back. You are capped. So maybe it's Tavarin actually taking power away from inertial dampers, or maybe... The flux in the area is just that potent, but whatever the case is, as you get closer and closer to the moon where the Intrepid is located, supposedly, you actually feel the deck plates rumbling. You feel tugs of gravity this way and that. Um, not unlike a... Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the actual device, like the ones they use in real life for astronauts to, to do G-Force stuff. It's not a centrifuge, but it's something similar. Basically, oh, the thing that swings around and around kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Gyroscopes, maybe that's it, yeah. So basically, you're you're almost feeling like there's G-forces acting on you, but not to the point that you actually would have to worry or would be in danger of passing out. 
And as you arrive uh, in front of the moon, uh, what you see is a class L sort of world. Um, what you're seeing is that uh, parts of the world are being almost consumed by uh, volcanic activity, probably because a certain wormhole is, you know, making tectonic stress quite a bad thing. But um, yeah, the more everybody looks at their scans of the planet, of the moon, the Intrepid's down there somewhere. Can I try to, like, figure out exactly where it is, like, center in? Get a I tell you what, uh, if you, you can either roll for this or you can give me two momentum. Oh, hey, I got to roll my... Um, oh, yeah, untapped potential. Can't my untapped that. potential. Captain, should I spend the momentum or sh should I make the roll or should I spend the momentum? Can you tell us what the difficulty is before we decide? It will be a three before uh, if you were to do the task. I say just go ahead and give the momentum. We'd probably end up using it anyways. I agree. Done. So yeah, uh, Cater, you indeed find the uh, Intrepid on one of the northern bits of the continent, the main continent anyway. Good news, bad news though. Uh, good news, it actually seems to be pretty much intact. I mean, especially for an old NX class like this, and you can't confirm it is an NX class, it actually took plan to fall really well. It's in one piece. Uh, the nacelles are still attached. I mean, obviously, its power reserves are draining, but yeah, it's it's in pretty good shape. The bad news is, well, that lava flow coming from the west probably is going to be a problem within an hour. Remind me of the size class of, of uh, NX class versus the... Um, class that we are, All right, like, could we realistically tractor it and then use it as like a spare vessel? I mean, conceivably, yes. Um, the NX class is a scale three, and the Prometheus is a scale four in this instance. So yeah, you you could tractor it, uh, Captain. I uh, propose we we tractor it and then pull it inside our shields. We might be able to make repairs and then utilize it as a second. Uh, vessel in case we need to fit into uh, uh, other times, for example. That is an awesome idea. Let's see, with that lava flow, I agree we need to try and get that ship off the ground. Can you bring us in? I can put her wherever you like. Stop her on a dime. And maybe you start to do that, but R'hllor <laughs> actually, like, puts a hand and goes, what? Uh, Lieutenant R'hllor, do you have something to say? Only that if he just pushed that button, we'd be in 50 different pieces right now. Look at this. And she kind of uh, splays her hands wide, and a holographic display, because again... Prometheus class, hollow emitters everywhere. A holographic display of the area between the Bastet and the Intrepid appears. And it's almost like a topographic map um, that is basically showing the stresses of not only the tectonic uh, activity, but also the gravimetric eddies in the area. And what you see is that literally the space between the Bastet and the Intrepid, uh, to say it's a minefield would be an understatement. Raylor, I'm disappointed in you. I, I thought you would know my, my skills by now. You've, you've been the only person looking at the sensors while I did some pretty sweet moves. Which is why I stopped you, because as oh. good as you are and as good as I am helping you, we, we, we can't get this vessel through that. Now, maybe if we split up the ship or send in a runabout, maybe. Oof, but a runabout would be so much more vulnerable. We'd have to buff those shields. Thavarn, give me a percentage on how much we have to buff a runabout's shields. Well, given the gravimetric interference between us and there, so long as you didn't fly us into one of the pockets of torsional stress, um, yeah, we'd probably have to go at about 130%. Entirely possible. Oh, actually, that's, yeah, that's totally reasonable. But we don't have any runabouts aboard. 
Plus, the runabout wouldn't have the power to tractor a uh, NX class off the ground. No, but if we brought in spare parts, we might be able to repair the damage to the ship and allow it to take off under its own power. I mean, the timing on a repair would be pretty dicey, but I mean, I am game. I would kill for a chance to fly an X class out of somewhere. They Do fly think, under, that's like a brick, but okay. Do uh, you think we should try and open a channel, see if we can uh, find out what the situation on the ground is? I mean, judging by V's uh, uh, record as a Vulcan and what his statement was in his distress call, I would bet there's not any power left in their communication system other than what's propelling their uh, the repeater signal. Yeah, just with everything that's happened, there's a part of me that's hesitant to take all of this at face value. Also, if he's uh, chronometrically synchronous to when we think he disappeared from, he won't have a comm edge. Uh, he might have a portable communicator. Captain, permission to attempt to open a channel? Go ahead. We'll see. Maybe it'll work. I attempt to open a channel to the ship. All right. So I want to be very clear. Uh, what is shown on the bridge, or I guess I should clarify, are you offering video from your ship or not? Audio only. Audio only. Okay. So then what happens is actually, yes, you get a video feedback. And what you see is going to be the interior of a classic uh, NX class. Now, what you're seeing is that the bridge is devoid of any life or any signs of life other than the Vulcan woman uh, sitting behind the communications console. And as the uh, signal comes over, uh, you see her kind of cursing and hitting the console in front of her a few times. And then uh, she says, oh, okay, can you hear me now? Can Hello? Yes, it's V. This is... Lieutenant Abasi of the Bastet, can you read? Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, I, I can hear you. Um, Bastet, it, I I don't know of a Bastet. Well, I I'm not gonna look at a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, sorry, I'm a little flustered right now. I I I mean, you heard my distress call. I I have no idea why I'm alone on this ship. At this point, we don't know that either we are going to attempt to see if we can get your ship out of there maybe um Cap captain tell her about the worm the uh, lava flow and and ask her if she can raise her shields do you have any external sensors um no the only thing i've been able to get running is uh communications and that's off of auxiliary backups uh i i'm not an engineer i i'll admit it but from what i know uh the the, the dilithium is cracked in in the warp core couldn't start it even if i wanted to we've been able to take scans that show a lava flow proceeding in your direction oh great Great. So you're you're gonna get me out of here before then, right? That's what we're going to work to take care of. Um, okay. Um, I I guess I have no choice but to trust you, disembodied voice from nowhere. Maybe I've gone insane. Maybe maybe this is it. V. Maybe you've finally done it. Maybe maybe you've you finally bit the bucket. Captain, she's very emotional for a Vulcan. All right. Just hold tight. We'll try and get you out of there as quickly as we're able to. Okay. Voice who I'm choosing to believe is real. I'm going to mute the, uh, the uh, channel for a second. Mm -hmm. Captain, um, I would like to agree with uh, Lieutenant Droxine. She seems awfully emotional for a Vulcan. Something feels off, and I don't mean to sound paranoid, but something just doesn't feel right here. I'm so inclined to agree. Can you perhaps get a sense of anything from 
where we are. I can attempt to establish a telepathic connection with her, but we are far away and there's a bunch of gravitational eddies in between us. So I don't know how effective it would be. Let's I, ask um, our voice in the sky. Relor speaks up at that and goes, I actually think I've brushed against her mind a few times. At least I think it's her. There's confused. I mean, she's generally confused right now, Captain. But I think we have a bigger concern. <laughs> Drossy immediately looks at his sensors like, uh oh, <laughs> what did I miss? Um, I don't know that it's visible, or at least uh, unless I'm not seeing it and the rest of you aren't seeing it. There's a... How to put this? Imagine a normal person is a is a baseball. Like, their, their soul, their emotional state is a baseball. I'm okay. sensing something on the order of a basketball circling around the Intrepid. Wait, what? Something with tremendous emotional and psychic potentials out there. But I don't see anything on sensors. So... If I may, is it possible that this entity or consciousness might in some way be related to the wormhole itself? Could we be dealing with some kind of, I don't know, subspace entity? Ooh, ooh, or maybe it's the fused psyches of all the missing crewmen that are all trying to re, uh, reintegrate themselves into the, onto the ship. Uh, I read about something like that ha happening to the Enterprise uh, B. Whew, it was pretty rough there for a bit. Can I do any research into how that situation was solved? Is there like a medical thing that happened? Like, how did they fix it? Like, I'll pull up any data I can pull up. For yeah, me. I was going to say, that is your uh, that is your permission to look it up on Memory Alpha, because off the top of my head, I don't know the correct answer to that. So feel free to Memory Alpha it. Wait, for free. wait if you're looking for an actual thing that happened, that, that was that. I made that up. Oh, okay. Don't, don't look that up. That's not a real thing. I was just like, nobody knows anything about what happened to the Enterprise B, but Druxine would have, re would have uh, researched all the Enterprises. Mm. So let's pick one that nobody knows anything about. Mm. So what are we going to do, Captain? <laughs> let's look at the Captain. So what should we do, sir? Either way, we know we need to get closer to attempt to get the Intrepid off the planet. We don't have a runabout <laughs> to get closer. Well, Lieutenant Riller, you mentioned separating the ship and navigating our way past these currents. I mean, Ooh, the yeah. Alpha section is kind of like a runabout. I, I mean, if if Droxine here takes Alpha, I'll take Beta, and we'll just leave Gamma back. Yeah, I I think we can we can work. Would we have enough power to track her it off with only two sections? With uh, we could probably manage it with one. The only real concern I have is that wormhole. If that wormhole changes in any way when we attempt this maneuver, eh, bad things could happen. Bad things are going to happen if we don't attempt this. Mm -hmm. All right, prepare to separate the ship. Yes. Going to Alpha Bridge. See you guys later. Wait, yeah. is, that, is this Alpha Bridge? Does anybody actually know? And Ferris just sort of laughs and says, yes, you are on Alpha Bridge. And last oh. I checked, we actually do all the controlling from here. We don't actually go to the other bridges. Oh, that's disappointing. I mean, if you wish to go to Beta Bridge, I'm not going to stop you. Well, I, I can't control Alpha from... Never mind. It's fine. Just why don't you do the Battle Bridge? Is all. And as Droxine is all dejected like, uh, we are actually going to do our first MVAM, which is going to be very interesting. So the way MVAM works, multi-vector assault mode works, is you all are going to be rolling me a control and a con. The difficulty is a two, and the ship will assist you with structure and engineering. 
Now that's when there isn't a big old wormhole messing with the gravity in the system. So, this is going to be a total difficulty of 4. And again, that complication range of 17 to 20. Yikes. And I guess I'll put us back on your bridge rather than the NX bridge. Can I assist by using the sensors to try and map the minefield as best as I can? Or by like focusing the sensors in like a cone shape in front of us? So I'm going to ignore to the right start port and starboard, but I'm going to focus in front of us in like a 90 degree angle going out so that we can try and like guide through the uh the warp eddies or the uh, gravitational eddies that's my right uh almost using tunnel vision to good effect yeah 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 i'll allow it uh you'll assist with a insight science on your part i spend three momentum to buy two extra dice i think that's okay yeah. uh, helm operations as a focus i'll give it to you Excellent. Okay, that's five successes. Now let me check those for complications. Yep, at least one of them is... A, oh. Yep, that's a 19 and an 18, so that's two complications. And this was a structure... Engines? No, engines... A structure and engineering. Structure engineering. Ooh, okay, so what that's going to mean is you do succeed... So you do get one momentum back, but there are three complications on the table. And well, I know exactly what I get. want those three complications to be. The first complication is that oh, as... But we get two momentum. Sorry. Oh, yeah, because of, uh, of uh, untap. So you're actually at four momentum. So the first thing that happens is the ship does masterfully sort of detach itself from what its different sections and forms into alpha, beta, gamma. And that part goes fine. But when you start to fly alpha and beta in, this is the first complication, alpha brushes against one of the gravimetric disturbances in the atmosphere. And what that's going to mean is alpha section is going to immediately lose three power. Now, power is going to be important here, so make sure you are tracking it on each sheet, but Alpha loses three power immediately. The second complication is that Beta is not going to brush against an anomaly. It is literally going to throw or fly right through it. It is going Oof. to suffer five power off. Finally, the third complication is that Gamma section is being pulled out of the atmosphere up towards the wormhole. Oh boy! But um, any momentum to have one of those not happen? <laughs> unfortunately, no. But what I would say is that you do get the alpha and beta sections above where the intrepid is located, and it's again the strangest thing. You're not seeing like a furrow where like the ship dragged itself on the on the ground, or any sort of sign that it was crash it, it that it crashed here. If anything, it just kind of looks like someone just picked it up and put it on the planet. Quick question about the loss of power before we move on. Mm -hmm. um, the secondary reactors would apply to the other sections of the ship, right? So each of them has 10 power or just the five? Because if it's just five, one of them it's, has lost power completely. It's going to be just the five. And it's something where the secondary reactors work when you're a bigger ship, but it does not help you when you're smaller, unfortunately then beta section has no power. Okay. So what's going to happen is beta is going to continue flying. It's not going to like drop out of the sky, but it cannot do any action that involves power until somebody does a power management there. Captain, after flying through that gravitational eddy, the beta section is functionally useless. It's running on emergency power. It's enough to keep it from descending into the wormhole or falling into one of the gravitational rifts. But uh, well, without a dedicated engineering staff on there, it's not going to be doing much to help us. We're going to need to restore power over there. We're going to have to send someone over to get that back up and running. 
Doctor? Captain, since we're now through the gravitational eddies, can we reconnect with uh, section B to restore power to it from se alpha section? I was under the impression we had to do all three. We couldn't just do two sections of the ship. I think that's right. I just work here. I don't know. It's about that time that a beep uh, comes at your uh, left hand, uh, Abasi. Uh, someone is calling you from engineering, specifically gamma section. Go ahead, Lieutenant Tamarochka. I, um, I just want to be clear what just happened. Not only was I in Jeffrey's tube when you decided to go to MVAM, you then persist to not tell <coughs> the situation. So what happens is I look to sensors to see what the fuck is going on, and I see a big kerfuffle. So I ask very, very importantly and respectfully, the fuck. We're still trying to figure that out. All right, well, I'll just be here on gamma section being pulled into what apparently is unstable wormhole. I'll see you in like 6,000 years or whatever the hell this wormhole does. Uh, I think it's just kind of slowly close the channel. Mm -hmm. We'll deal with that later. Oof. GM, how how fast is it descending into the wormhole? I mean, how much time does she have? Oh, I mean, she probably has a few hours, and Tamarochka is a bright girl. She'll figure out something. But, um, yeah, you probably don't want to let that sit for too long. All right. Well, we came here to tractor an old ship. Let's try to tractor an old ship. All right. So, uh, tractoring is actually going to fall to our tactical station, or at least that's what it's always sort of fallen under. Uh, you are going to be doing, uh, I imagine Tavarin in this case, uh, Tavarin, you're going to be doing a control security, and the alpha section will assist you with a structure security. And the difficulty on this would normally be a two. However, I'm going to spend two threat to make it a difficulty of three. Okay. Uh, Captain, I would recommend contacting the survivor on this ship and warning her of the, uh, well, the incoming attempt at raising them from the surface of the planet. Uh, and be mindful that MX ships don't have tractor beams, so you may need to explain what we're doing. Okay, Lieutenant Cater, open a channel, audio only. And you hear V's voice again. Oh, um, hello? Hi. Oh, uh, Ensign, we are giving you... We're in orbit above the crash site. We're going to attempt to get you off the planet. Um, okay, are you going to transport me off? or We're going to attempt to raise... The Intrepid itself. Oh, like through grappler cables. Something like that, yes. Just want you to be aware that it's what's happening right now. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I, I guess I'll be here. I, I don't know if I can do anything to help you, but... If, if you're able to keep an eye on your hull integrity, let us know if there's any torsion if there's any buckling uh, okay yeah yeah i could do that should we should we beam somebody down there with like a piece of dilithium just to like start their warp engines and maybe engage the ablative armor so that they've got more hull integrity before we do this just floating it out there and i think varissa <sighs> sort of says um Small point of order, they have polarized hull plating, not ablative armor. Look, I can't even remember. NX ships are pretty old. I but would think are. since one was named Enterprise, you'd remember its entire history. I mean, I know that one, but its engine specs, are they blend together a little. What Plus I'm hearing the... is excuses. <sighs> yeah, you may, she makes a good point. I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to review 
the NX series again. It's a good idea, though. I, I volunteer just in case we need to fly it. I can fly the NX series. That'd be great to put on my resume. Are you actually capable of affecting oh, no, the necessary no, no, no. repairs? Yeah. Or are you just going to wow. beam down and fly a ship without a working warp core? Wow. I spent a year as an engineering uh, and uh, in engineering at Ethiopia Planitia. I know warp engines, kind of. That response doesn't really fill me with confidence, but I appreciate the attempt. Lieutenant Tavarin, would you be willing to take care of these repairs? If uh, Lieutenant Alexio believes that he can competently man the tactical station in order to use the tractor beam to extract the ship, certainly. Well, I don't know about confidently, but I think I could get the job done. It won't be as pretty as when you do it. Well, thank you, Alexio. I appreciate that acknowledgement. Then, yes, Captain, I, I could certainly beam down and try to effect repairs to their warp core, antiquated though it may be. Let's try and get that done before we attempt the lift. Out of character real quick, just because I want to help you guys out. Uh, what is Alexio's engineering and what is Tavarin's engineering? Because it might be one of those things where reversing that order might work better in your favor. My engineering my... is four. Okay. And my engineering is three. Okay. I mean, my Whereas my security is, is four. Three. So okay. I and for me, I'd be I'd be more useful doing the tractor beam than going to repair the ship. Okay. Fair enough. I did want it to uh to be an option just in case. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um if by my count, uh the alpha section has two power remaining, yes? Mm -hmm. All right, so when you send someone over with a transporter, that's going to be one power. The tractor beam is another power. So at some point, someone's going to have to go down to main engineering of Alpha Section and do some restoring of power. Oh, I don't volunteer for that. That's not going to be fun, like flying in an X series. Captain, if I may, I think you're best equipped to handle that while I beam down along with Lieutenant Droxine. I need somebody to fly that ship. <gasps> I knew I liked Tavarn. And Lelora just kind of looks at you very qu questioningly, Tavarn, and says, what, am I nothing to you? I mean, maybe Oof. I want to fly the NX class. You know, you didn't even ask. Oh, I just assumed he, he was so excited about it. But if you want to, I'd much rather you go down with me than, oh, than Justin. But right in my heart. I think we have an away team then. We've we've got Tavard and Relor. Yeah, I love it. Uh, we should come up with a team name. I got nothing, but I'm sure we'll think of one. You're making me regret my decision. Well, of course, yeah. that's my job. Mm. Yeah, the traitors, the backstabbers, the heartbreakers. That's who you guys are. So, yeah, that Abbasi's going to stand and turn towards Druxian. In this case, I'm heading down to engineering. I want you to take the bridge. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. All right. And as uh, people go to their various positions, uh, I have a follow-up question to know. Um... Where are you beaming on the uh, good old Intrepid class? Are you just going to go to the bridge? Are you going to go straight to engineering? Uh, where are you going exactly? I think I would beam to engineering while uh, Relure would go down to the bridge itself. Okay. So uh, let me just find that real quick. So the reason I ask um, is because it does change the difficulty of the transport task. Um, specifically... Um, it is one of those situations where beaming to one place over the other or doing two beams uh, might be detrimental to what you want to do. Uh, uh, but I'll... Suggestion? You go ahead. From our transporter pad to the Intrepid <coughs> and then split up from there. Yeah. yeah, we could do that. That would make things a hell of a lot easier. So let's break things down. Uh, this would normally be a control engineering assisted by the ship's sensors engineering. Starts at a difficulty of two. 
You're going to and from a transporter pad, so no difficulty increase there. Um, there is gravimetric disturbance in the area, so the difficulty goes up to three. But that's as far as it, as far as modifiers go. It's just going to cost you one power per attempt. So even if you fail this, you're not going to like beam out into empty space. But uh, you will lose one power for the attempt if you fail. I will roll for the transport. I got the ship. All right. Again, that is a... It's, ooh. All right, so I need three successes on a control engineering. Otherwise, I believe you go down to power of one. Momentum? Yeah, I'm going to use one for an extra die. Okay. Could Starship Recognition possibly help on this? Knowing exactly where on the NX class to be sending them? I'll give it to you, sure. Survey says four successes. Hey. You actually get a momentum back. All right. Feel so, free to roll your untapped potential. Yeah, roll your untapped potential. Could get you momentum. Yes. Hey, you get two momentum back. Very nice. So, uh, on your way to engineering, Abasi, you beam the away team over. And we're actually going to cut to the uh, bridge. Uh, because a very important scene that I guess no players are involved in, but one I want you to see anyway. Uh, where Laura steps out under the bridge uh, after crawling through a Jeffrey's tube duct. And uh, as she steps out onto the bridge, uh, Ensign V kind of jumps and goes, oh, Who's there? Ah! And she sort of holds a phase pistol over at Relore. And after a moment, she, you know, the, the two women just kind of stare at each other. And then V just says, Okay. Um, you're not a figment of my imagination. And Rolora says, well, of course I'm not. What do you, you know what? I don't even want to unpack that right now. Uh, where's the helm on this ship? And V just sort of puts the pistol away, uh, droops her shoulders and says, I, I, I don't know. I, I th this, this was supposed to be my first day. And Relor just face palms. Relor just face palms the hardest anyone's ever face palmed in their life. And that's where we're going to take our 10 minute break. So uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Stick around, everybody.
bartender or something like in um in our lounge like i could like set up the lounge and serve people i almost want to see that happen now but uh hey everybody welcome back uh if you're just tuning in uh basically the whole premise is is that a ship at a time the old nx09 intrepid uh was discovered in 2374 200 years away from where it should be. So the players went and investigated, and now they're in the process of trying to reclaim the Intrepid. Uh, the only snag is the entire crew is missing, save for one ensign. And um, let's just say she's not being very helpful. That ensign is, is not very helpful indeed. But uh, I thought what we would do is we would actually start... Uh, with Tavarin in main engineering of the Intrepid. Now, of course, uh, Tavarin, uh, when you go to main engineering, you're treated to the NX uh, sort of horizontal core. And it's one of those things where you just sort of look at it and everything seems to be intact. Uh, no ruptured conduits, no wires hanging out of the wall. Looks like something out of a museum almost. And... As you're looking around, I would like you to roll me an insight in engineering, please. Difficulty of one. All right. And uh, I will spend one momentum to get an extra die on that because my insight is terrible. Okay. Uh, would I have an applicable focus? Um, starship? No, I don't have starship construction. No, probably not. Actually, starship construction would apply here. Unfortunately, that's Jonah, not uh, this character. Ah, so. uh, okay. Power systems, uh, computers, transporters, and replicators. Yeah, none of those would apply here, unfortunately. All right, so you do succeed, but there's a complication. So you're noticing that, again, this engine's too pristine. Like, this is fresh out of dry dock pristine. And to your knowledge... The ship that this is supposed to be had been in space for months, years, gone under a refit. There should be some sign of wear and tear. Nothing. Absolutely none of it. Complication. So, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say is the complication is you do find the uh, dilithium chamber, uh, but the door is stuck. Okay. Um, Don't he's rolling your untapped potential. Oh, yes, that is true. Um, nothing. Okay, no help. Um, even though he knows the severity of the situation, um, he is almost enthralled by the pristine quality of the engine. Like you said, it is almost something out of a museum. Mm -hmm. And he takes just a moment as he ignores the, the sort of locked down dilithium chamber to pace around the engine for a moment. And he puts his hand to the side of the paneling waits a minute, shakes his head, and just says, Warp 5 engine. Hmm. And I'd like, it, would it be possible to try to force the uh, dilithium chamber? It would be possible, yes. You would have to roll me a fitness engineering difficulty of two. Okay. Uh, so he will walk over to that dilithium chamber then, and uh, I will try to force it open. So I will buy, my fitness I think is quite Good. So I'll buy one die for that. Okay. Good old and... percussive maintenance. What's that? Good old percussive maintenance. Fitness and engineering. Three Survey says three hey. successes. You get a momentum back, and don't forget to roll on tap potential again. All right, still no help from untap potential. But, yeah, Tavarin, you uh, interlock uh, your fingers around the handle on either side of the core door, and you give it a good firm tug backwards, and with a screech of metal, uh, you do pull the door out, and, uh, yeah, what you see inside is that something is what has been described to you. The dilithium crystals are indeed shattered inside. Um. Can I take a scan of the, the dilithium crystal chamber, looking for either 
damage to like the magnetic containment system or some indication as to what caused the crystals to crack? Was it just like the impact of the vessel hitting the ground or was there some kind of strange effect that caused the crystals to crack? I actually have a good handout for this, but to see if you get access to this handout, I need you to roll me a insight engineering or even a reason engine. Nah, let's keep it insight engineering. Uh, insight engineering difficulty of three. Would anyone mind if I took three momentum for that? Take it. And power systems? Power systems would apply. Insights, engineering, and 4d20. Here we go. Four hey. successes. You get a momentum back. Uh, you know what? I think I'll just tell you instead of giving you access to the handout, because that way it'll, it'll just go a little bit quicker. It's almost as if this warp core has been running for 200 years. But that doesn't make sense. Everything looks new. So how has it been running long enough to shatter the crystals? Um, I would like to tap my comm badge. Um, Lieutenant Thavarin to the captain. Go ahead. Quite frankly, sir, I have no idea what's going on here. Based on sensor scans, the dilithium crystals have fractured due to overuse, but the engine itself is pristine, like it just came out of dry dock. Nothing about this situation makes any sense. Are you able to do any scans for any chroniton radiation in the area? Uh, give me a moment, sir. Am I able to detect anything? Uh, obviously, there are chronotons from the ship's displacement through time. Mm -hmm. But is there anything that I can glean from a scan of those chronotons that might suggest, uh, I don't know, something other than it simply having been transported through time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You detect quite a lot of chronotons in the area. But if you want specific groupings of what chronotons are, that was English, sure. Uh, I will need you to give me two momentum so that I can sort of refine what you pick up. And this two momentum is basically creating the advantage that you n can separate out which chronotons are related to one another. Hmm. What do you guys think? Well, you're you're on the planet. It. I heard one yes, so <laughs> I'm going to go with that one yes and blame it on Mikhail, I think. I think that's who I heard. <laughs> All right. So uh, as you go down to one momentum, um, what you're going to notice is that, yeah, there's a sizable chrono chronometric field around the warp core itself. And now that you look at it, you understand why the engine is so pristine on the outside and not so much on the inside. Time is flowing at different rates. And specifically, you remember that psychic potential, like the swirling mass of psychic potential that Relor mentioned? You are detecting that it is chronoton based, and you can literally track it as it swirls around the ship. And every time it does, it seems that time in this engine core reverses. Um, I would report that to the captain um, mm -hmm. and also to the bridge of the Bastet. Um, question for you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Based on what I see of the influence of this temporal consciousness or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. uh, do I think that I could restore the dilithium crystals without them being damaged by it? What I would say is that it would be a 50-50 shot it would be one of those things where if you could get the engines running long enough just to get it up and running, you'd probably be okay. But if the creature passes too close at the wrong time, your efforts will be for naught. Hmm. Uh, Captain, if I may, I believe that we should try, if possible, to establish some kind of connection or first contact with that psychic energy field. I don't know what you might be able to do on board the ship. But 
if we don't get it to move away or stop its chronometric interference of the uh, the affairs on board the Intrepid, I may not be able to make a, the necessary repairs. Agreed on that. Lieutenant Droxine, you heard all of that? Uh, I heard the end part. So you heard about the chronometric being? Yeah. Uh, I figure we get Cater to try and talk to it. He likes to talk to things. While I'm taking care of our own warp core, I want you to try and handle this. Sure. Captain, may I suggest we may also want to try beaming down a couple of uh, uh, shield generator stanchions? That way... Uh, Tavarn might be able to establish a shield specifically around the warp core, so that if we don't manage to establish a communication with the psychic being, maybe we might be able to initialize those uh, um, or uh, reconstitute those dilithium crystals regardless. It's right we about then, if you don't mind me interrupting real quick, it's right about then that Alexio and Cater you two specifically are going to get a message from R'hllor on the bridge of the Intrepid. And I'm going to give you guys access to a handout. Feel free to sprinkle it into conversation. I only interrupt because it is temporally relevant. You may continue what you were saying, Abasi. I think uh, we can go ahead and beam those down. I'm not sure if the shielding technology will be able to withstand any chronometric disturbances. I accidentally deleted Cater. I'm sorry. I, he's back. You're good. You're good. Why do you leave me? <laughs> it's apparently revenge for that time you accidentally deleted me, but I was dropping momentum on the board. That's the problem. That's true. These are, these are things that exist. So the information that she sent me, I'm actually just not going to say anything about it to the group. Okay. I'm just think about that. Well, well, yeah, but if I'm seeing it too, I think I would um, want the doctor's opinion. So, like, oh, Lieutenant Cater, are you seeing these scans? Willer is sending sending us. Uh, yes, I am, Lieutenant. What? Can, can you make heads or tails of this? With What is your medical opinion? Uh, this person doesn't seem to be a, a Vulcan in, in, in the sense that we know it. Without further medical scans, I can't give you a straightforward answer. Hmm. I'll um, send the, the, I'll send this info, info along to the captain. Okay. Um, and just page the captain uh, to tell him that we're getting some some medical scans. I'm still not entirely sure that this V is who she says she is. Oh, I'm 100% sure she's not who she says she is. G gentlemen, either of you want to share with the class? Oh, uh, d I'm, I'm sorry. To, uh, it appears that the medical scans of this Enzyme V seem to suggest that she has a uh, immune system so powerful that she's never had an injury in her life. In fact, she doesn't even seem like she's ever been sick or that she even could get sick based on any known disease that, uh, that we can think of. I'm going to like interject at that point. To put it lightly, this is medically impossible. She's in perfect health. And that concerns me. Could it be a result of the stasis she said she was in? I mean, regardless, we have a, we still have a debt to, or a, a what do I want? A commitment to uh, rescuing a life form in, in distress. We can oh, discuss, absolutely. we can discuss what, uh, what she might actually be after she's safe aboard either her vessel or ours. I don't disagree. I'm just worried about the waiting. Has she shown any hostile intent? And you would, I think at this point, R'hllor would just kind of give you a telepathic message, uh, Cater, that says, you know what, maybe I should have let Droxine come over. I am getting my ear talked off. 
you do you. <laughs> I'll just send it back. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I would like to reach out telepathically mm-hmm. to the surrounding area around the ship. Um, mm-hmm. I want to try and get a feel for what this psychic entity was. Because mm-hmm. um, just something feels off and it just occurs to Cater that I think it has something to do with what's happening inside of the ship as well. Um, what do I need to do to make that check? Good. Yeah, that's what I'm debating, how to make this a fair check. Um, let's do this. Let's have you do a control and a medicine. Okay. It will be at a difficulty of five. Okay. But the complication range will stay standard, so just a 20. Uh, is it okay with everybody that I buy a um, momentum with the one? Yep. And then I'm yep. also going to ask if I can call upon my value that I gained from last session. Uh, mm-hmm. I forgot how my roots feel. So I'm trying to get back in touch with my Betazoid telepathy and like remembering, like, you know, my time before Starfleet mm-hmm. um, to use my determination to get two free successes. I'd allow it, but just so you know, you would also have to give me one threat for that third die. Oh, I love giving you threat. Let's do it. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Okay. So I have two successes. And as far as a focus, mm-hmm. I, I, mm, mm, I'm going to go with composure because I'm trying to stay calm because like last time I did this, I almost melted uh, an ally's brain. So I'll allow it. Yeah. All right. Here goes something. All right, that is indeed five successes, what you need exactly. Time to be alive. So, Cater, you sense the being, but it's one of those situations where you don't necessarily... I'm trying to figure out how to say this. So you know how an ant, an ant would think of human beings as being this mythical sort of godlike creature. Um, simply because they live in 2D, we live in 3D, or at least classical thinking says as much. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those situations where you're the ant, and you're looking up at what is essentially an unknowable and unfathomable intelligence. But as you're sort of getting a feel for this entity, your gaze kind of looks over at the view screen And what you see on the view screen swirling around the ship, and only you see this right now, you see what is essentially a serpent-like creature made out of spectral stars and interstellar gases. And it doesn't really have much in the way of features. It's, It's serpentine in general. But what happens is towards where the head would be on this creature. Um, More or less, these five red orbs begin to illuminate, and they stop circling the Intrepid and seem to look directly into your soul, Cater. Does it feel hostile? No, if anything, it actually seems curious. I will send out a telepathic like i will empathetically i don't know the word Mm -hmm. send out a like a greeting like just a calm peaceful i want to send calm peaceful emotions towards it nothing seems to happen it just sort of continues to stare at you all right um acting acting captain um there's some sort of ghost monster thing hanging out around the ship it's like a i describe it as best i can it's Mm -hmm. like serpentine and i've connected with it but it doesn't seem hostile just seems curious but and then i will use the same description you gave of like we are the ants and it is like a human Mm -hmm. so it is beyond my ability to even truly comprehend Mm -hmm. anybody else seeing this Teresa, mir alexio no, nothing on my end, sir. All I see is a ship and a lava flow that is getting dangerously close. I promise you it's there. Uh, Cater, I, I don't disbelieve you. Uh, that just means that you're the only one who can... Are you able to uh, make any kind of communication? Can you convey I, to it that we need it to move away from the ship? I'm going to attempt to convey that we, we need it to move away from the ship. Can I make a check? 
Yeah, I'll let you do a check. Uh, go ahead and give me a presence and medicine. Oh, boy. Difficulty of three. Yikes. All right. Droxine and... to a bossy. Go ahead. Uh, the doctor appears to have made contact with the whatever it is down there. He says it's some sort of spectral serpent, uh, but only he sees it. So we're, it's all kind of riding on him at this point. I just keep doing what you're doing. We'll keep you updated. I'm going to give you a threat to buy an okay. extra die. Oh, well, uh, before you do that, go ahead and roll on tap potential because you oh, still right, need to. Right, 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 right. Uh, challenge dice one. There all it is. right, I get a threat. Carry on. Well, take another one. Um, 3d20, and I will maintain. <sighs> will this be considered a spatial phenomenon? Technically. I have spatial phenomenon as a focus. I'll give it to you. Um, three successes very nice so you telepathically communicate that you need whatever it is to move away from the ship and I have good news and bad news which would you like first oh bad news bad news the creature does uh, move away from the uh, intrepid but it starts coming at you and for a moment you maybe have that horrific thought of oh god I've just sicked it on us when it just actually kind of flies past you and maybe it's one of those things where like you specifically move the view screen to track it because again nobody else can see this happen I will do that. so everybody else just sees the view screen shift wildly and what you see Cater is that the serpent is now encircling gamma section I will make mention of that to the acting, acting captain. Well, the good uh, news, captain, acting, acting captain, is that it's moved away from the intrepid, but the bad news is that it's now circling gamma section. So that's a thing. All right. Alexia, can you uh, get in touch with uh, Lieutenant uh, Tamarochka? Let her know that she's got what we know about the entity. I'm going to let uh, uh, Tavarn know that he's ready to go on the uh, recombining of the Dalethium. Yes, and um, I'm sure she'll appreciate being looped in on events this time. And uh, we we sort of hear, as Alexia, you make that call, we just sort of hear, I'm sorry, so let me get this straight. Not only have you not told me about MVM, not only have you got me thrown into wormhole, you are now telling me there is unnotable serpent circling vessel. Is this correct? It's well, people, yes. it's just curious. Uh, that's right, but on the plus side, you won our bet. I said we were never going to use the gimmicky uh, saucer separation, and 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 you and we you you said we definitely were. So, um, so I I owe you a uh, a cup of uh, a bottle of my fam favorite blood wine. Well, this would be nice if you actually had bottle of blood wine on person, but um. Hey, you know what? Since everything's going to shit over here, I'll just announce this now. Apparently, assholes at uh, Utopia Planitia installed still. Congrats, if we make it out of this alive, we can make our own liquor. That's... That's that's fantastic. Something to, to live for. Something to give you that determination to, 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 to push through. Yes, because apparently I have to do everything by my fucking self. And the message stops there. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha section to Tavarn. Uh, yes, acting captain. Uh, please confirm with your sensors, but we should uh, have we should we should be able to confirm that the energy being has moved away from your ship, and you should be able to recombine those other theme. Uh, and if you would do so at your earliest convenience, we'd very much appreciate it because Gamma section is having a bit of a hard time, so uh, we're trying to pick up the pace here. Rest assured, I don't want to stay here any longer than is necessary. Um, I'll get to work. And GM, am mm -hmm. I detecting any kind of bizarre chronometric field? Has that dissipated? All of it is dissipated. All of it. And before I get to work trying to install the dilithium crystal, which I imagine is going to be a relatively facile procedure, mm -hmm. um, can I use my tricorder to scan the interior of the ship? Mm -hmm. um, I know that she mentioned that she came out of stasis. Can I detect mm -hmm. uh, the location where she was being stored in stasis? I mean, I like would a, say even for free, you would probably know that sick bay is on an NX class like this. Sick bay is the only place that would have such a thing. 
Okay. Um, then I would like to very quickly um, reinstall the new dilithium crystals. Mm -hmm. And if it's okay with everyone else, I'd like to stop by sickbay for a minute. Hey, you're on another planet. You do what you want. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I actually have a map for this, so no worries. I figured you'd end up here eventually. <laughs> So, uh, when you poke your head into the uh, intrepid sickbay, uh, Tavarn, what you see is that, again, everything is immaculate. Everything looks like it's ready to be, you know, like, crewed by the first crew ever. Um, in terms of stasis chambers, though, it's sort of that area uh, on an NX class where the biobed slides into the tube. That's the stasis chamber. So, they only have the one. Um, but what you are noticing is that as you're looking around sickbay, there is the sign that there was somebody here at some point. Specifically, you see a discarded uniform on the floor. If it matters, it is of a command staff, but it does not bear any rank insignia or name tag. And can I take a look at the uniform just to see if it's tailored for... Uh... I don't know, a man or a woman, or if it's uh, like what size it is. Is there anything significant about that? Like, is it is it built for a man, like a six foot or something like that, or a woman? No, I know where you're going with that. Let's just say it's fit for a woman. A woman about the size of uh, Ensign V. Okay. Um, could I check the readout on the stasis chamber? Mm -hmm. Um, am I detecting anything about the, uh, the reason why this person was put in stasis? Are there any records about, uh, the medical condition that she has or the like? You look at the computers, which, uh, since you've toggled the engines on power is slowly being restored to all systems. You look at the readouts stasis chamber ended local time, like local to the ship, uh, ended about two hours ago. And in terms of conditions of the patient, there was no patient. Hmm. So no medical records at all of the person who was being kept in stasis? Absolutely nothing. Well, that's just damned odd. Um... Can I check around the rest of sickbay uh, to see if there are any, like, let's say, logs left by uh, the chief medical officer? Yeah. Uh, as you're poking around, you do get a snippet of a log. And the reason for this is probably easy to tell that that sort of chronometric disturbance that was affecting the engines, it's probably affected the computer courts, too. So when you look at the logs, you're only getting snippets. <clears throat> But you do see that there was mention of some form of phenomena that was causing people to disappear. Like the chief medical officer says something along the lines of, and, and it's just the damnedest thing. One moment they were there, the next, all that was left of them was the uniform. Uh, I, I fear at this rate, all of us are going to disappear without knowing whatever's going on to us or what is what has happened to us. I think... And then the log just stops there, like full stop right there mid-sentence. Huh. Um, could I take up my tricorder and scan the area? Are there any other phenomenon or perhaps energy traces that I can detect or that I can correlate with the timestamp on this log, perhaps? Do you want so the good news or bad news? Let's go with the bad news. Bad news? Yeah. Yeah, you know who was here. You want to know who it was? You could probably yes. guess. It's Miss uh, Miss V up on the bridge. I see. Uh, I suppose I'll report all of this information, just aggregate all my findings rather than, uh, you know, going through the laborious process of actually articulating it all to the mm -hmm. captain um, and request any kind of insight orders or suggestions that he might have for me. Getting all this information. The boss, just stops thinking about it. 
What is Ensign V's status right now? I think you'd have to speak with uh, Lieutenant Rulor to know that, sir. But last I heard, she was on the bridge. You may want to get up there. I don't have a very good feeling about this. Uh, might I suggest that we also beam the doctor down here. Um, I'd rather have two psionically uh, powered individuals and a medical practitioner here. I'd rather keep him on board just in case we need him here. I understand, sir. Although I will tell you, I probably won't be able to glean any information about her condition. But um, I will report to the bridge. Do you still want us to try to tractor the ship out? I can reinforce the structural integrity fields and activate the hull plating. Yes, we still need to tractor the ship out. I don't want you on it as this lava flow is getting much closer. If we can get you out of its path, we can take a little bit more time in figuring out what's going on. Very good, sir. And uh, before I leave sickbay, uh, I would like to try to take, I guess, the equivalent of a hypospray filled mm -hmm. with, I don't know, neurozine or anesthesine or one of the various different uh, an analogs from this time period. Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Well, uh, it is at this point that we're going to do kind of a joint scene here. Uh, so I guess I'll put you back in uh, the bridge for now. But uh, Abasi, you're doing a little bit of power management so that uh, the alpha section can actually do the tractor beam. So uh, this is going to be a daring or a control at a difficulty of two. You can choose either daring or control. Entirely up to I, you. I will use my daring. All right. And what you can't say here, and you have to declare this before the roll, um, you can decide to succeed at cost. And what that'll mean is that there will be a complication for every one success you do not meet. So, like, if you get one success, there's one complication. If you get zero successes, there's two complications. The good news, though, is that if you get enough successes, like if you get two or more successes, you immediately get one power and then one more power for every momentum you spend. And this is important because you can actually go above the normal maximum. So you could go to six, you could go to seven. If you really wanted to, you could go to 10. But I wanted to present that. In this case, no, I don't think I'll take that. Okay. I am going to give you one threat to roll three dice. Okay. Oh, wait, uh, Cater, we need to see a uh, untapped potential from you, because that could give momentum. Could also give you a threat. But... Okay, yeah, yeah, carry on. And my warp field dynamics, will that be a focus? Mm, I'll give it to you. All right, there's three successes. You get a point of momentum. Do you wish to spend that momentum immediately on power? Yes. Okay. So alpha section, you basically reroute some power from, you know, basically the grav plating and the hollow projectors <coughs> that you don't need right now. And you are able to bolster the energy reserves of the uh, Bastet's alpha section. And as we return to the bridge, Alexio, you're seeing that you now have three power to work with here. Captain, is it is it time to attempt to pull the in intrepid off the planet? Make that pull. Why am I even All sitting right. in this chair? <laughs> All right. I will um, I'll activate the tractor beam. Okay. So and this... Oh, go ahead. Could I assist by going through this process of rewriting power to polarizing the hull plating and aligning it with the tractor beam's uh, frequency? I certainly think that is an excellent assist. So you're going to be doing a daring engineering to Varen. Uh, Alexio, you're going to be doing a control security. The ship, the Bastet, will assist you with a structure security. Total difficulty on this would be a three normally because of the gravimetric disturbances in the area. 
I'd like to make things interesting by spending um, four threat. I think it's it's three or four threat. Basically, I'm spending threat to increase that to a difficulty of five. Okay, I am going. I'd like to adapt my value of my instinct serve me well. Okay. For um, two successes, so I'll I'll spend the determination for that. Okay. And then should I spend the threat for another die or, or should I? I mean, obviously. At this point, at the, yeah, all right. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you then the, the three threat. Oh, wait, obviously he's got to roll his untapped potential. Yeah, you untapped need potential and obviously oh, okay, could, get okay. you, could get you momentum. Nope, nope. I get threat. <laughs> okay, well... You you can take three more. Um, would self control be an applicable focus for this? Yeah, I can see it. I'll give it to you. I can I can think of a few ways I could justify it. And if I can justify it to myself, you could figure it out a way. I I believe in cool. you. All right. So we got we got do there, and now I'm rolling three dice mm -hmm. with the focus. Okay, that is seven successes already. That is nine successes already. Can the ship get you ten? Oh, sorry, what's the ship rolling? Structure engineering. I think. It's, it's either that or structure security. <laughs> either way, you get a crit. <laughs> so I think that's the new record, actually. Um, that is a grand total of 11 successes. Very, very nice. So yeah, that's... At six, we get six back then. Six. Yeah, just, you get six. We just capped back. it from zero to cap. <laughs> yeah, that's that's impressive. Like that was amazing. Now, of course, we all know what this means. Is it means groundskeepers is going to roll nothing but fucking oh, complications boy. from oh, boy. now on. But <laughs> all right. So what happens is Alexio, you turn off the targeting sensors. You know, <laughs> yep. You don't meditate to see. Yeah. At which point, Droxine is like. uh Alexia, I'm showing your targeting sensors are off. Is there something <laughs> wrong? Trust me. I got this. <laughs> and if you'll imagine a cinematic view of almost this sloping, uh, rapidly approaching magma, lava, whatever the actual term is supposed to be, uh, rapidly approaching the Intrepid, the Alpha section comes in over top of the Intrepid and it begins emanating a bluish-hued sort of particle stream towards the Intrepid, which in turn uh, begins to rumble the ship. And Tavarin, you feel this. Um, you begin to see the Intrepid lifting up from the surface of this moon, of this little planet. And not a moment too soon that as the Intrepid moves right up out of the way, the magma flows almost immediately scorching where the ship once was. Now, my question is, do you just sort of remain in atmosphere or do you go back up into space at this point? Uh, we go back out into space. Okay. That's what I think, too. All right. So as you go back up out into space, you do meet back up with beta section. Now, you don't combine with beta section. It's just sort of there. But... We're now going to have a very important scene on the NX bridge because, well, I think there's a lot of things that need to be said at this point. So the way I'm imagining it is basically, Tavarin, you immediately came onto the bridge, did what you needed to do, and then you paid attention to R'hllor and V. So what you see is that R'hllor is almost like banging her head against the desk and V is just going on and on about some innate su inane subject maybe her parents maybe her love life who knows you you could honestly pick at this point but you get the sense that relora's had to suffer for the past couple of hours through this uh report lieutenant i wish i was dead i wish that anomaly had killed us i wish i'd never been born i wish I wish a lot of things, but right now I just wish I wasn't here. You do know that you only have yourself to blame for this, right? You volunteered for this mission. I know. I know. And in the future, I'm going to let Droxine do it because fuck this noise. I want to be acting, acting captain. 
Fair enough. Um, Ensign. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, You're blue. And last I checked, we didn't have anybody blue in Starfleet. That is true. Although last I checked, we didn't have anyone like you in Starfleet either. Thank you. I'm not sure that was actually intended as a compliment, but you're certainly free to take it as such. Uh, how how should I take it then? As an expression of confusion and interest. And she starts to absentmindedly twirl her hair. Go on. Not not in that sense. Um, oh, no. Uh, I don't. I quite frankly, I don't even know what to 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 ask you or what to say to you. Um, how are you doing? And Relore, there's just a big old thud as she says, great, now they're flirting. Great, they're flirting. I wish I, you know what? She's got a phaser. I could just, I could get that phaser and all my problems could be fixed in one moment. Just uh, one moment. I want to say that you have so much to live for, but I, I don't really know you that well. I don't know if you really have anything to live for whatsoever, so... That just, you know what? I, I appreciate the attempt at gallows humor. I, I, I love the darker humor. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'll, you know what? I'll say what you can't. And R'hllor just sort of sits up straight, turns to V and says, you're not Vulcan. You're not human. You're not a mix. You're not fucking anything that is capable of being in that form. So cut the shit. What are you? And to her credit, uh, Ensign V actually doesn't change demeanor, doesn't change expression. Still sort of an upbeat tone says, oh, well, I used to be a Q once. And that's where we're going to end today's session. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, So yeah, what did you guys think? One of the best sessions you've ever run. Excellent. Yeah. I think that so was too. great. That was amazing. That was fantastic. There were so many different things happening, and all of them were very interesting. So good job. Cool. That's what I like to hear. All right. Well, uh, YouTube, this is where I end the recording. Uh, as a reminder, though, before I stop the recording anyway, um, we will be off next week, the 9th. Uh, so these lovely gentlemen will be returning on the 16th. Uh, Twitch, stick around for a little bit longer because we're going to raid somebody, but uh, YouTube, see you later.